right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Jack Bosch, who's in Phoenix, Arizona. How are you doing, Jack? I'm doing great, John. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And Jack has a method called Land Profit Generator in a company, Land Profit Generator, you can see on his shirt there. Uh, and it's all about uh, how to make money uh, with land. So flipping and investing in land properties. So, uh, Jack, let's let's just start and baseline this. Why are you so enthusiastic about um, investment in land? I'm enthusiastic about it because it's the same as house flipping, just much easier, much simpler, with no tenants, toilets, termites, as we call it, with no... Um, no, none of the hassles, house flipping, the profits are the same or better. And more than anything, it works in any market. So it's worked in the 2009, 10, 11, uh, kind of, or 8, 9, 10 uh, or crash. It works through the pandemic. As a matter of fact, we have seen more sales than ever during the pandemic right now. Um, and, and more people are letting their properties go. So it's, it's really is the perfect business. Also, I love it because it's completely location independent. So we have students now that teach uh, we, that, that do this. We teach this now. So we also have students that to do this from Germany, that do this from China, that do this from, from South America in the United States without ever having to come here and do the deal. So it's really, it's, it's the perfect business if you want to live like the lifestyle of traveling, which is what my, my wife and my family and I love doing, which currently we can't do that much. Yeah. But, 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 then, but that's the only downside of we can't travel, but nobody can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so describe then a little bit, first of all, the types of the types of land properties that uh, you, you know, you typically advise people to invest in. Right. So we do flipping like other house flippers do. So we hold these properties for a very, very little time. If anything, if sometimes many times we actually hold them exactly zero time, we just assign them with the double closing. So on. And the kinds of properties we focus on are typically three kinds of properties. Number one, it's the lots in the city, the infill lots, as it's called, basically 35 houses, one empty lot. That lot is ready to be filled in. Uh, prices of the neighborhood are $300,000 plus. A builder jumps on that and buys it. The second one, or even a homeowner buys on it and builds their own home there. Uh, second property is right in the outskirts of town and what we call the path of growth. That's a sweet spot for us in those anywhere from two to 30, 40 miles outside of the city. There is um, there's a great demand for properties because you're close to the city, you're close to all the amenities, but the land is much cheaper. So it's interesting to have actually for two kinds of buyers. Interesting, number one, for a person that wants to buy and sit on it and have the city approach and the value go up. The second kind of buyer is that one of a, a future retiree or somebody who just wants to live not in a condo or a place, they just want more space, they want an acre, two acres, and mm -hmm. but still be close to the city. Um, so that, and it's more affordable. Typically an acre to 10 miles outside of the city is only worth $30,000 versus that acre in the city is worth $300,000. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to afford more land while still being close to it. So, so it's young families, but also a, few, a lot of future retirees that are like 10 years away from retirement, realizing that they need to retire a little bit more on a the budget. They buy that over time, either build a house on it or put a mobile home on there. And they have a dignified retirement. The third kind of property we focus on is more like recreational acreage, like mini ranch, mini farm, like 10, 20, 40 acres, an hour, two hours away from town, where people there with their RVs, ATVs, they like hiking, mm -hmm. boating, and things like that, kayaking. They take their stuff, go out on the weekend, have a blast, and then come back to the nine to five all week long. Right. Um, and then, so, so for people um, watching, it may, uh... So investing in land, it may for for the uninitiated, it may seem like a, a more complicated thing to do, but you're saying it's not. It's actually the opposite because with land, there's no tenants, toilets, termites, there's no houses, there's no repairs, there's the, you don't have to meet anyone there, you don't have to sit with anyone at a kitchen table, convince them to uh, to sell their property to you at a discount. We do everything by mail, by we make offers by mail, we send letters to people, they call a call center, which you don't even have to pick up, they can call. You can pick it up, but you can also use the call center. So it's really, it's a simplification. We don't have to estimate repairs are on kitchen, bathrooms, toilets, and the roofs, and foundation repairs and mold. There's none of that there. 
There's no appraisers, there's no inspectors, there's no bank lending that needs to happen because when we buy these properties, the properties that I mentioned, these three properties typically have a value of below anywhere between five and one hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars. So on those properties, uh, it, they often well, they don't want them anymore. They're willing to give them up cheap. So we actually offer only between five and about thirty cents on a dollar. So five to twenty five, if it goes above that seventy five or one hundred thousand dollars, we go above that. But usually, like in the below hundred thousand dollar properties, we buy them for five or we put them on a contract for five to twenty five cents on a dollar. So we have such a buffer that mm -hmm. we don't have to even be hundred percent accurate on the value of the property. We can be 10, 20, 30 percent off, and we still right. make money on the deal. So it's really it's a, everything. It's a simpler. You, you strip off all the complexity of houses. And I have nothing against houses. I own over 40 sure. rental houses. I own over four, almost 400 apartment units. Uh, I own commercial property. And but but this is really like the simplification. And we got started in that because I'm from Germany. My wife is from Honduras. We didn't know how to estimate the bathroom repair, kitchen repair. Roof sure, repair. sure. But our first deal, we got on a contract for $400. It was worth $8,000. And we flipped it to the neighbor that same day for four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The next deal we bought on the spot for five hundred dollars. It was worth twenty thousand dollars. We sold it for ten thousand dollars. I mean, there's not much you need to know about the piece of land if there's nothing on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, so um, in terms of you said this can work for any part of the country, but obviously it's um, you know there are different parts of the country are obviously you know a lot more expensive or whatever. So are there are there particular markets that you target that you think are better than others? Um, we, as I mentioned, the, the three kind of properties that we like mm -hmm. the interlots are only working obviously in growing cities. If the city's mm -hmm. shrinking, then an interlot is not that of that much yeah. interest. Uh, the uh, the lots on the outskirts of town also are particularly good in areas that are growing so that the extra the growth goes outwards and goes to the properties. And the recreational properties are usually only interesting if there's something to do there because nobody yeah, wants yeah. to go out on a piece of complete desert and just sit there, right? So, yeah. so therefore, um, that on its own kind of guides the search of like when we, when we teach people that we have the first area, it's like go look for growing cities and then go around those growing cities. And then go an hour or two hours of those hours outside of those growing cities and look for an area where there's something attractive going on and you found your areas. So with that said, I'm always harping on one area. Like in Nevada, there's already only, what is it, in Reno? There's Lake Tahoe and there's, and there's uh, Vegas. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're like on the northern edge of, 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 um, of Nevada, there's absolutely nothing there. There's nobody mm -hmm. available to buy these properties because nobody lives there. There's nobody, there's nothing going on. There's no attractiveness to it. And there is at the same time, and it's far away from everything. So that is not a good area. But mm -hmm. having said that, if you're outside of Vegas, that's a good area. If you're outside of Reno, that's a good area. Like if you're perhaps towards the California side of Reno, uh, or like where Reno is over the border, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. some other areas. So, so it's really, it works all over the United States, in every state of the United States. But are there some areas where naturally, because of just, if, if like, if you go into, what is it like, uh, what is it up there, uh, Dakota, North Dakota, mm. there's areas of North Dakota where there's nothing to do and sure. nothing to get. Those might not be great. But then if you go into the main city over there, of North Dakota, there's again, growth going on, the city's growing and so on. So you just got to be applying a little bit common sense, but it works mm. in every state. And then why do you say that it's uh, it's something that uh, you said your sales are up or whatever right now during the pandemic? Why why is it a good uh, is it a good investment now? It's an interesting thing. There's like it, uh, there's an article that one of the big brokerages, uh, real estate brokerages, posted um, that uh, just a few days ago that stated that there's a big spike in the search for rural property, and in their opinion, and I agree with that opinion, is that it, that is driven by people just being sick and tired of being perched into a small apartment, a small condo or a small house. Mm -hmm, and yeah. they want space. They want more space. They want more liberties. Plus, they want to be not where the neighbors breathe on top of them and spread the virus. The, the concept of an acre or two acres outside of town sounds pretty darn good right now mm -hmm. uh, because you can take your RV, you can take your ATVs, you can have some fun there. And, uh, and if you build something there, if it's close to the city, you're always socially distant from everyone else forever, right? And 
and and I know this myself. We live on an acre. Like I don't have any problem social distancing because my neighbor is like 100 feet over there, and the other neighbor mm-hmm. is 300 feet on the other side. And and um, so it makes it makes life in these kind of pandemic situations much more pleasant. The people understood that, and particularly the multi-billion billion dollar uh, industry of of RVs and ATVs and outdoors and, and hiking and so on. They have been restricted. The, the hiking trails were closed. The parks were closed and so on. And they're like, man, I, I want to go. Even the RV parks were closed. And yeah, they're like, yeah. hey, let me go out there. Let me go on an RV park. They were all closed. And they're like, well, if I can't rely on my RV park to be open anymore, I want my own piece of land. Right? And it makes perfect sense that yeah. there is this demand for that. And so we're just seeing actually an influx of buyers coming in uh, during this time. Yeah, no, that that all makes total sense. I, I can see that, and I can certainly see that uh, RVs are going to become more popular. Having your own space is going to become more popular. That's for sure. So it's it's probably a good uh, it's a good thing to be in in right now. So what are um, so this is all the upside. What are are there any are there any pitfalls or landmines that you need to look out for? Well. Apart from buying a you know a piece of swamp somewhere in the middle of nowhere, but. right. So the, the piece of swamp is always the question I get. It's like, what about you? What if you get swamp land? Now, first of all, there's people that buy swamp land if you properly disclose it. Because I bought, mm-hmm. I sold one time a property that had this huge dry wash going through it that mm-hmm. covered like sixty percent of the property, and I sold it to somebody who wanted to do gemstone mining. Go figure. Nice. But that's mm-hmm. not the normal. That's the exception. So I want to be very very clear. That is not what we typically sell. Um, you do want to, typically, there's not that many things you be careful about. There's things we check for, but they have really never, ever happened. Like, for example, environmental issues. Now, typically, environmental issues are only an issue in the city because mm-hmm. outside of the city, nobody has ever spilled a tank of gas on there. Yeah. Nobody has, a, the factory hasn't sp- spilled out fumes right next door to it because there is no factory next door. And there is no car repair uh, shop or Jiffy Loop next door that have been throwing the oil next door for 20 years, right? So as a result, this is actually not an issue on the rural land. It's not an issue in the outskirts of town. And it actually is typically not even an issue in the infilots, like, uh, because, because typically an infilot has been master, has been bought by a big developer, then subdivided. And when that developer bought it, they already did a mental test on that property. And it's mm. extremely unlikely that the house next door spilled chemicals over it all sure. the time. This just doesn't happen. The environmental protection people are always telling me they're not worried about the refrigerator leaking leaking into the ground. They're worried about decade-long leakage mm-hmm. into the ground and pollution mm-hmm. on the grounds. That's really not the case. Another thing, what you really got to make sure, though, is uh, one of the things that is probably the biggest issue that we find is that you got to make sure that the property is buildable, that you can build on it. But that's mm-hmm. something easy to find out because we actually put that to the back of our transaction because we make our offers, we get our offers accepted, we assume the property is buildable, but then our contract that we signed, that the seller signs with us, allows us to back out of the contract any time for any reason. So mm-hmm. because of that provision, we can push some of the research a little bit further back, wait until we have the deal and contract, and then it's one phone call to the county and say like, hey, county planning and zoning department or development services, Hey, can you tell me if I can build on this property? And they tell you right there, selling you down, no, it's too small, you can't build on it. In which case, we back out of a contract. Happens yeah, yeah. very rarely. But usually, it's like, yeah, you can build on it, but you can't put a mobile home on there. Um, mm-hmm. Or they tell you, yeah, no restrictions. Or they tell you it's uh, those kind of things happen up. But, but those are things that easily that, that you, we research the moment you have these properties on a contract. Uh, but not before. And we have guidance now when we teach this, we have uh, detailed guidelines on how to do that and when to do that. But so really the thing is when you buy properties at five to 25 cents on the dollar, very little can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, listen, this is, uh, Jack, this has been great. It's been very, very informative. Um, All of Jack's details and his company will be in his contributor bio. But before we go, Jack, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. All right, sure. So our company is, again, Land Profit Generator. You can go to landprofitfund.com, F-U-N. So like having fun, landprofitfund.com to learn some more about us. We also have my own podcast. It's called the Forever Cash Real Estate Podcast because it's all about generating profits and, and rolling them over into cash flow over time. Uh, we're using our land business to generate cash and cash flow by selling with self-financing too. That's what we do a lot. So we somebody pays a down payment and pays monthly payments. 
And uh, and then, as I said, we also have a uh, so the Forever Cash Live Real Estate Podcast, Forever Cash Fund, and I do have a pot. Uh, I do have we do have a Facebook group called Land Profit Generator Real Estate Group. Uh, it's a free Facebook group where a lot of our students hang out, and we can if you saw, if you feel like yeah, that sounds a little bit too good to be true, check in, join the Facebook group. You can check it out, and you'll see that just today, two people as the time of this recording. Two people have posted their brand new first deals with a $15,000 profit. And I think the other one is like a twelve or $12,000 profit. And that's just on an ongoing basis. Our students are posting deals almost every single day, well, sometimes multiple times a day because there's so many deals happening. That's fantastic. Well, listen, Jack, this has been great. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.